After eight weeks, the Alliance of American Football has suspended operations. You sit on a throne of lies. It hasn't quite folded. I mean, it's basically folded, but it leaves behind eight franchises, eight already semi-retired head coaches, Cannot anywhere from 50 to $100 million in lost money, this one highlight, and a lot of football players that can still play. That's right, even if the AAF is dead, its legacy may be the many players that return from the football abyss and make an impact at the NFL level, either for the first time or as a grizzled vet making their glorious return. There are going to be some players who make the jump, and you can bet on it. So the AAF is done, but you know what's been here the whole time and isn't going away? My bookie, the absolutely best way to bet games online, safely and securely. There's still time to bet on the NCAA Final Four, the NHL playoffs, and the NBA playoffs, so why not use the best and easiest website with top-notch customer service? And my bookie pays you quickly, so you don't have to worry that Tom Dundon is lurking in the shadows to pull the plug on the whole thing. After this video, go to the link below, put in my code POINTS50, and get a 50% cash bonus on your first deposit. Again, that's code POINTS50 for a 50% cash bonus on your first deposit. Again, that's code POINTS50. Come on, you know you can't let the playoffs go by without laying some action. My bookie. Today we're breaking down 10 players that have a chance to wash up on the shores of the National Football League after the capsizing of the AAF. And while the AAF was a notch below the NFL in terms of talent, coaching, and the fact that everyone had to wear starter merch instead of Nike, don't be fooled. There's talent all over the field from quarterbacks to kickers. So in memory of the AAF, here's the players that can keep its eternal flame alight in the NFL. Meet Nelson Spruce, aka the Spruce Goose, or otherwise known as the Wes Welker of the AAF. Spruce was signed out of Colorado by the LA Rams after going undrafted in the 2016 NFL Draft. He caught six passes for 51 yards in his first preseason action, but lost the chance to impress during his rookie season after a knee injury sidelined him for the year. After going through the signed wave life cycle of a fringe wideout, and despite occasionally looking like butthead in his team pictures. Uh, <laughs> I got cut. Spruce found his new home with the San Diego fleet and has been their best, most reliable target all season. Even with a rotating cast of QBs, Spruce hauled in 38 passes for 426 yards and a pair of touchdowns through eight games, including a 146-yard outburst against Arizona in Week 7. In the right system, and yes, I'm referring to the New England Patriots, Spruce could become a decent fourth or fifth option in the passing game and carry on the legacy of tiny white receivers in the league. Birmingham Iron quarterback Luis Perez spent training camp with Sean McVay and the LA Rams after winning the Division II Heisman following his last year at Texas A&M Commerce on the strength of 46 touchdown passes. After missing out on the Rams 53, Perez joined the AAF to prove himself and quickly became the most talked about player in the new league. After giving up a career in pro bowling, Perez taught himself how to be a quarterback and has caught the attention of NFL scouts because of his strong arm and picture-perfect mechanics. Perez has struggled at times despite leading the Iron to a 5-3 record through their first eight games, but the 24-year-old ceiling makes him one of the most attractive prospects in the AAF. And since he once met Sean McVay, he could be an NFL coach if the QB thing doesn't work out. If you want consistency, look no further than Arizona Hotshots receiver Rashad Ross. Ross has never had less than 50 yards receiving in a game, and he's found the end zone in seven of eight games to go with his 583 total receiving yards. Ross's speed and shiftiness has been the main reason the Hotshots offense has found so much success through the air. Ross is 29 years old, and he already spent five years with eight teams in the NFL, but sometimes the light bulb goes off later for some than others, and that could be the case for Ross. 
Carter, yep, with a K, has wreaked havoc in the trenches for the Salt Lake Stallions all season, recording seven sacks, 13 tackles for loss, and a forced fumble. At 25 years old, Schultz still has plenty of time left to make a return to the NFL after bouncing around with the Cleveland Browns and Carolina Panthers. Besides, he wouldn't be the first Northern Iowa alum to make a triumphant run at NFL glory after making magic in a semi-pro league. However, there are no records of Carter Schultz bagging groceries recently. Damn self-checkout line. Luis Perez might be the most talented quarterback in the AAF, but there's no questioning who's been the most productive. 27-year-old Garrett Gilbert out of SMU has led the league's best team, the Orlando Apollos, to a 7-1 record. Under Steve Spurrier's aggressive tutelage, Gilbert has thrown for a league-best 2,152 passing yards and a 13-3 touchdown-to-interception ratio. Gilbert bounced around in the NFL over five seasons after being drafted by the Rams in the sixth round of the 2014 NFL Draft. He got a shot last season after Cam Newton and Taylor Heineke went down for Carolina and completed two of his three passes for 40 yards in a limited opportunity. Man, he should have just thrown six picks and the Raiders would have signed him. He's the Drew Brees of the AAF as yards leader and he's the winningest quarterback in league history. So if he can add a false championship to his resume, there's a good shot he'll get another go round in the NFL. If you were to ask Pro Football Focus who the inaugural MVP of the AAF is, they would tell you it's San Antonio safety, Deron Smith. The former Fresno State Bulldog has picked off three passes for the Commanders and garnered a league-best 93.1 rating, making him perhaps the GOAT in the short history of the AAF. A former sixth-round pick of the Bengals in 2015, Smith's abilities as a cover safety would make him an asset for teams that want to improve their dime packages in 2019. From one force on the San Antonio defense to another, edge rusher J. Ron Elliott has tallied seven and a half sacks in eight games, the best in the history of the league. The AAF's Bruce Smith was signed on as an undrafted free agent by the Packers out of Toledo in 2014 and picked up four sacks and an interception in three years with Green Bay but eventually faded away into the warm embrace of the Alliance. Teams are always looking for pass rushing depth and J. Ron Elliott should get a call from one of those needy NFL teams that struggles to get to the quarterback. According to Pro Football Focus, former 49ers corner Keith Reeser has allowed just a 21.2 passer rating when he's been targeted this season. The FAU product spent four years in the NFL before making the transition to the AAF and leading an Orlando defense that has been one of the best in the league. Reeser has defensed nine passes and picked off three through eight games, and at age 27, he's still young enough to try his luck in the NFL one more time. Do you remember when, for one season, Charles Johnson looked like the future of the Minnesota Vikings receiving core? Back in 2014, after migrating from Green Bay to Minneapolis as a former seventh round pick, Charles Johnson put up 31 catches for 475 yards and a pair of touchdowns in limited action, beating out former first rounder Cordell Patterson for targets in the process. Unfortunately, Stefan Diggs and Adam Thielen happened and Johnson could never recapture the magic with the Vikings. This year with the Orlando Apollos, however, Johnson leads the league with 687 receiving yards, including an AAF record 192 yards in one game. That record's unbreakable. Johnson is 29, but he's proved that he's still got the hands and explosion to cause problems for a defense. How hard is it to find a good kicker in the NFL? It's nearly impossible as the 2018 season taught us. Former Texas kicker Nick Rose was part of the NFL during the 2018 kicking calamity, but only as a kickoff specialist for the LA Chargers during their divisional round games in the playoffs. After the Chargers were ritually slaughtered in Foxborough, Rose signed with the AAF, the league that of course doesn't have kickoffs. 
Instead, Rose took over the place kicking duties for the San Antonio Commanders where he's hit all 14 of his field goal attempts thus far. With the uncertainty at the kicker position for so many NFL teams, it wouldn't be surprising for a team in the league to get a Rose instead of choosing to run off with a young hoe. That's a Bachelor reference. Even though all of these 10 players are unemployed and had to buy their own flights home, they've got as good a chance as any to collect their paychecks from many of the 32 NFL teams next fall. America loves a comeback story, and perhaps if for nothing else than keeping all of us sane for eight weeks in between the Super Bowl and the NFL draft. And the AAF could be considered a small success if it can take a few talented football players and serve as a platform to launch them towards their gridiron dreams. You can't mention former NFL player Rod Smart without seeing this picture of his days in the XFL. What a legacy. As for the AAF, the discounted starter jackets at your local TJ Maxx will be where the dream lives on. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do not forget to run over to my bookie and enter in my code POINTS50 and get a 50% cash bonus on your first deposit. I'm 5PointsVids and you made it to the end of the AAF. Also this video.